Oh my gosh, it's actually happening. Counter-Strike 2 has been officially announced and it looks like we're gonna be getting everything that we asked for and more. This is more than an engine update. It's a big over-deliver. Valve essentially is making the whole game again from scratch on the Source 2 engine and rebranding the whole thing to Counter-Strike 2. R.I.P. Global Offensive. This is exactly what I have been asking for for many years now. It seems like everything that I talked about, every one of my concerns is getting addressed. I am in shock. The footage you're seeing is from a series of videos that Valve has put out about the new game. I'm gonna go over everything and talk about what it means in terms of gameplay. First, the new smokes. Smokes were on my list as the number one thing Valve needed to fix when it came to gameplay. Not only have they fixed them, they've reinvented them. Smoke grenades now create volumetric 3D objects that live in the world. This effectively kills one-way smokes and smoke glitches as we know them. Smokes will no longer be able to clip through the walls. Every player now sees the same smoke, which makes the gameplay much more fair. I always thought that Valve should make smoke Smokes more like Valorant with a clear boundary. This is a much better implementation of that. It's so elegant and it makes Valorant visually look like trash in comparison. It's exactly what we asked for. The over deliver is how dynamic the new smokes are. Nades and bullets will temporarily clear smokes. This is by far the most controversial change and the one that will affect gameplay the most. This makes Counter Strike a completely different game. Since it's now possible to clear smokes instead of spamming them and looking for tracers, shooting through a smoke is a big risk. It clearly gives away your position. An argument could be made that this lowers the skill ceiling. A comparison I have is reducing the potency of wall banging. I think it's too early to say that, as it introduces new gameplay possibilities instead of just removing old gameplay mechanics. There's actually some more teamwork possible here. I also think that this will increase the pace of gameplay, as it's effectively a smoke nerf. You aren't required to wait for smokes to clear if you want to do an execute. It's also a massive nerf to the M4A1S. The strength of the M4A1S was to spam smokes without giving away where the player is. This is also a nade buff. Instead of just going for plink damage, they now are more useful as a utility for clearing smokes. When you use a Molotov to delay the enemy, the enemy can now smoke the Molotov and then nade the smoke and push like there was nothing there. So nades counter smokes, smokes counter Molotovs, and flashes counter my migraine headaches. I can imagine a scenario where teams call for a smoke clear with a nade as a normal part of a bombsite execute. You don't have to always wait for the smoke to clear now. The one thing I'm very worried about here is defusing the bomb. You can't really defuse the bomb behind of or inside of a smoke now. This makes retakes even more difficult in a game that suffers from boring save meta. Easter egg in the smoke video? It makes the Negev meta. I'm going to confidently say that this is a War Owl reference. Next, the new maps. Valve is introducing maps in three different different ways. The first, Touchstone, is a simple port of the map to the new engine. The geometry of the map is exactly the same, it looks the same. I don't think these maps are gonna stick around, they're probably just there for testing purposes to see how the new mechanics change the gameplay as they tweak the new visuals. The second, Upgrades. This is also a port of the geometry, but with significant improvements to the visuals, specifically the lighting. This is a great idea to test, because one of the main concerns I have is that whenever you quote-unquote improve the visuals, is that visibility could be hindered. Finally, we have overhauls, which are complete remakes from the ground up. These are the ones I'm most excited for. I gotta say, from the footage that I've seen, it looks so clean. This is taking Counter-Strike from an old dusty game to something that holds up visually with current titles. But it doesn't sacrifice visibility, it doesn't introduce clutter. Instead, from what I see, it looks like visibility will even be improved. You can probably tell my voice is a little hoarse right now. I have been talking to people. I have been making this video. I've been, I, 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 let's go baby, it's go time. I can see a scenario where if the reflections are too bright, they will become distracting from the gameplay. Maybe they need to tone down the reflections a bit and make them a little bit more subtle. They look good, but I don't want to get flashbanged by the floor. I am particularly excited for the new mapping tools, Hammer 2. I stopped working on my map Amigo because I believed that Source 2 was coming out soon and I wanted to make it with these new tools. This is a big deal for community maps. Makers. The best way I can summarize it, it's easy to use, 
to do more complex things. The final video talks about tick rate. This is not tickless like some of the leaks were saying. I specifically avoided talking about those leaks because what they were saying did not make sense to me. This is sub tick updates, which I think a lot of games do. The video does a good job of explaining this. From how I understand it, the client, meaning your computer, will keep track of all of your inputs on a sub tick level. When you send your packet to the server, it will include information on when your input was performed with more precision than the server tick rate. So let's say that the server tick rate is 100. So the server is updating every 100th of a second, which is 10 milliseconds. If you click the left mouse button to fire at two milliseconds into that tick and the enemy is running past your crosshair and they leave your crosshair at eight milliseconds into the tick, the new system will register that as a hit where the old system would not. So regardless of what the tick rate is, let's say it's 64 tick, it's still gonna be a lot more precise. Please let me know if I'm misunderstanding this. For netcode analysis, I usually wait for the battle nonsense videos. Also, I think 128 tick servers are pretty much confirmed here. They use 128 tick in their example visually. Some cool things I noticed. Taser go zap. No taser skin, sorry, Hugan Gaga. Ga. Valve devs don't buy kits on buy rounds. Maltov go foosh. These two smokes are dramatically different colors. I think they're going to color smokes based upon offense or defense, so you can tell whether a CT or a T threw it. The orange one looks like a T smoke, and the gray one looks like something a CT would throw. And we have an italicized logo, how fancy, which gives a sense of pushing forward. It's leaning forward. I wonder if the intention of this design is to hint at a faster paced gameplay. Let's talk about modding. Because it's essentially a new game, all of the mods for CSGO are pretty much dead, including the ones we've made for my videos. So the whole library of fun game modes from all the goofy videos of the last three years is going to go bye bye. That's fine. We can rebuild. I really hope that Valve is going to have mod support. From what I've heard, they probably are. And because it's Source 2, honestly, I'm thinking it'll probably be easier to mod, but there's some people saying opposite of that. One thing they 100% need is dedicated server support. I'd say the biggest benefit of switching to Source 2 is that the development of the game is going to be much easier and quicker. Source 2 is more modular, and I'm assuming that a more talented team that have learned a lot of lessons with Global Offensive built this new game to last a long time and built it so that they can go in and make quick updates if something breaks. Your skins are not only safe, it looks like Valve is going to embrace the whole skin community and add new ways of viewing your skins and playing around with them in game. They're all getting ported over like we expected. Here's something I didn't see that we need. Counter-Strike 2 needs to have an overhauled matchmaking system so that the ideal way to play the game is in the game client. And of course, get rid of the cheaters, but that's a big ask. This is the final silver bullet that'll pretty much secure Counter-Strike as the once and future king of tactical FPS. Counter-Strike 2 is doing a limited test, so it's possible you could get to try out all of these changes right now. To check if you have access, open your Global Offensive client and it'll let you know on the main menu if you do. I did not get access. Hello, it's getting late. I have not eaten yet today. I made this video under the premise that I was not getting into this beta. I wasn't into the beta. I'm about to press the button to go live. I check one more time. Guys, I'm in. I'm still posting this video. It's like a trailer reaction video, but now I get to go into the game and actually play it. I know I'm not entitled to anything, but I've been covering this game since it existed. And when I thought I was left out, it just broke my heart. I posted about it on Twitter and the replies that you guys wrote, as well as other people in the community who I don't even really know. I've always felt like an outsider and that really warmed my heart to see that kind of a, a reaction to me not getting the beta. But I'm in, guys. Don't worry. Everything's good. I'm going to go eat. I'm going to come back. I'm going to play the game. We're going to make more videos. More videos. A video a day. Hey, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Thank you so much for watching. I'm the War Owl, and I still have no closer. I can't. What a. I've had a, I've had a few days, man. I broke all my equipment on accident. I had to buy new equipment. I don't have my streaming setup. I, I, my car broke down yesterday and I got trapped out there for like eight hours.